Okay, so back to guess. We found out that it was a right angle triangle. Because of that, we know one side can be considered the base and the other side can be considered our height. So let's move on and find the length and height. Sorry, the yeah, the base and height, length of the base and height of the triangle. So here we are. So to do that, another way, or oh, before we do that, let me just go back and show you that there actually was another way we could have proven if it was a right angle triangle. Think about what this means. This means that the slope of this side and the slope of this side are what? Hmm, that's right. They should be negative reciprocals of each other. That means that they're the opposite sign and flipped of each other. Let's check it out. So I'm going to find the slope of xy. Here it is. Reduce it. And the slope of yz. Here it is. Reduce it. And look at this. 1 over 2. Flip 1 over 2 and change the sign, and you will get negative 2, and vice versa. So that's right. The slope of xy is perpendicular to yz. So, why we wouldn't even check bother checking the slopes is it doesn't help us with the final answer. Whereas, we already found the distance of xy in the previous example, and distance of yz in the previous page, not the example, but the previous page, let's go back and see it, we found the distance of xy and the distance of yz. This gives us our base and our height, and we can find the area quickly. So back to the page again. So we're just going to whip through this a little fast here. Slopes, we checked that the slopes are perpendicular, but again, I'm just going to remind you because we checked that, we would still have to find the lengths, guys. So by doing the lengths first, we're eliminating having to do this step. I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. So the distance of xy was root 20. Distance of yz was root 45. We call one the base, another one the height. So you get root 20 times root 45 all divided by 2, and that is the area of triangle xyz. Base is 20, height is root 45, multiply them out, divide by 2, and you get 15 units squared, or 15 square units. The reason why we do it this way, guys, is we don't know what unit these values are in. We do know its area, so there must be a square for area. All right, let's try one more. Something else that you have to keep in mind when you're asked to classify is you'll be asked on the test to classify quadrilateral. So to do that, you need to look at a four-sided shape and classify quadrilaterals. We need to classify a four-sided shape, the quadrilateral, into possibly a trapezoid, where you have one pair of parallel sides, a parallelogram, where you have two opposite pairs of parallel sides, a rectangle, which means you have two pairs of equal parallel and perpendicular sides, and a square, where all sides are equal, and finally a rhombus, which connects a parallelogram to a square by calling it a rhombus, where all four sides are equal in a, in a rhombus, same as a parallelogram, but this way all four sides are equal, and in a square all four sides are equal, but they're perpendicular. So you can classify quadrilaterals by looking at their slope and their lengths to be able to classify them further into that. This is just a flow chart of how, as we move further and further to classifications, this particular shape is the uh, ultimate shape because this square is a rhombus, is a rectangle, is a parallelogram, is a trapezoid, and is a quadrilateral. So the square is the most specific shape whereas the quadrilateral is the least specific shape. All right, that's the end of the video, folks. That's all there is. Moving on to the next day. Have a numerical day. Take care.